Support for Radio Friends comes from Homestead Senior Care, providing trustworthy, kind-hearted senior home care services in your loved one's home. All caregivers are thoroughly screened, extensively trained, professional, and reliable. Homestead is all about providing the highest quality home care service to fit you and your family's needs. Plus, if you would be interested in becoming a caregiver, they offer great part-time positions. Give them a call at 573-442-4333 or check it out at homeinstead.com. Good morning and welcome to Radio Friends on Thursday, November the uh, 2nd. I want to introduce you to John Howlings, who came all the way from Jeff City today to be with us to tell us about a special event that's going to happen at the First Presbyterian Church. You were having a bluegrass and southern gospel concert, right? Right. And this is going to be at the First Presbyterian Church. Six o'clock on November 4th. Yeah. Uh, it's a free concert. Uh, we are asking people to come and bring a, a food item, uh, a non-perishable item that will go into our fruit, food pantry, or a cash donation. Uh, we had a great success with a similar concert a year ago uh, and, uh, and got together over 200 people in a, in a relatively small sanctuary, and it was a very, it was a great event. So this is, the, the whole purpose of this is to, to raise funds or food for the pantry. Correct. Right. And in, in doing this, you also are going to present some really wonderful gospel and bluegrass music. Right. Uh, our group is seven musicians uh, that we've put together from central Missouri. And it's These, called, your group is called what? Missing Pieces. Missing Pieces. Right. And we chose that name because we like to do the old Christian music, uh, much of which is no longer found in today's modern hymnals. Mm -hmm. uh, we dust them off and put a little up-tempo -temp bluegrass style to them uh, and come up with a, a hand clap and foot tap and yeah. a good time. You know, I was looking... I, you were showing me the music that you will be doing, and I said, well, wait a minute now. You wouldn't be singing this music at the First Presbyterian Church, right, normally, but, but, or, at the, or at the Catholic Church either. Uh, maybe not not within the uh, worship service itself, but as, as a special presentation, right. it, might, it might come up. But that music that you're going to be doing is wonderful. Those are wonderful old hymns. I'll fly away. Right. Uh, make the circle be unbroken. Right. Daddy sing bass. Right. Uh, I mean, the list just goes on and on. So when you leave that evening after that music, people are going to be humming and toe tapping, and you might even have a revival there. You, it, the closest <laughs> thing to it, Paul. Right, right. <laughs> Um, so it's just it's an evening of wonderful music mm -hmm. and and just feeling good and right. and, you're, and you're helping people you're also helping people with food right right okay. and we fit we will fill the sanctuary it's open seating uh, and uh, we had a big crowd last year and we're looking for a, a similar if not larger crowd this year okay just to whet everybody's appetite uh, give them uh, some of those songs that you're doing uh, we'll be uh, doing a version a bluegrass version of Jesus keep me near the cross or near the cross uh, you mentioned daddy sang bass we'll be doing a version of there is a fountain by William Cooper now, daddy uh, sang bass that that's a song Johnny Cash. Right. Uh, Carl Perkins wrote it, and uh, he actually wrote it for Johnny Cash. These two guys had their dependence on drugs and alcohol issues uh, back in the mid-60s, and they really cared for each other. Uh, and uh, Perkins wrote it for Johnny Cash, and Johnny Cash was the one that actually recorded right. it and got the most mileage and out of it. And then you got the Mama Maybell song there. Uh, uh, Will the Circle Be Unbroken? Right. The Carter Family. The Carter Family. We will do a little bit different version of uh, of uh, that song rather than I was standing by my window on a cold December day. That's the Maybell Carter version, but we will be doing the Haberson Gabriel version. There are loved ones in the glory whose dear forms you often miss. Mm -hmm. Same tune. Yeah. Will the circle be unbroken? Okay, so give us a date and time. November 4th, 6 p.m. at First Presbyterian Church in Jefferson City, 324 Madison Street. Okay, and this is to raise funds and food for the food pantry or food bank in Jefferson City? Right. First <laughs> Presbyterian Church Food Pantry. 
Okay. Thank you so much for coming by, John. You're welcome. Best of luck to you with that. Thank you. Now I want to turn to Jennifer Bean. We're talking about food yes, here, too. Yes, absolutely. Right? Central Missouri uh, Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. And what have you got? Well, a lot of times when the weather turns colder, <laughs> we stop thinking about being active with nutrition in the community. It's easy to do in the summertime when we're gardening, mm -hmm. but it's important that we, we can still be active. For example, the farmer's market moves inside in, starting in November. On the first weekend of November, they move to the Parkade Center, Columbia's uh, farmer's market. So they're inside, so no yes. matter what the weather is like, Absolutely. you still got the farmer's market. Yes, and you can get seasonal, local food. You can support your own, your neighbors and your friends with whenever they bring their produce there. And for our members of the community that use EBT, our our farmer's market does double the bucks. So that means that if you go and you use your EBT card, your food stamp benefit card, you can get twice as much money at the farmer's market for fresh fruits and vegetables. So you're saying if, if you get the food stamp, mm -hmm. you can get twice as much by going to the farmer's market mm -hmm. than if you go to a grocery store. Yes, it's a grant funded program that our farmer's market, the Columbia's farmer's market is a part of, and there's other farmer's markets. If someone is listening or watching and they're outside of Columbia, they can go online and they can see if their local farmer's market participates in this grant funded project which provides essentially makes up the difference so that way people who need good nutrition but may not have the resources can still have access to it. That's wonderful. Yes it is. So has I, this been going on for some time? It has been um, the grant funded program I'm not sure exactly when it started but at least a couple of years here in Columbia. And hopefully it will continue Absolutely. for a while. Absolutely. So there's that and anyone can participate but let's say you have some youngsters and you want um, it's cold they can't really go to the park November it may be raining we can hope. Mm -hmm. um, so kids can do a, there's a community kids in the kitchen program that's at the library. It's usually the third Saturday of the month and in November that will be warm and toasty and so you'll be making healthy warm and toasty treats that kids can do themselves in the kitchen. That's okay, a lot of fun. So in November, the mm -hmm. third Saturday mm -hmm. of November, the theme is warm and toasty Warm and toasty. Treats. Mm -hmm. And for what age group are we talking about here? Well, Really, any, any kid or kid at heart, because a lot of times they need some extra helpers too. So if you have your own kids or you're bringing kids or maybe a play date at the library, and there's usually needs to be some extra hands there. But typically we're talking elementary kids. Okay. And that's what we're, we're And you're for. asking people to, to register ahead of time. Absolutely. You can do so by going to on the library website, and you can register there, or you can go directly to the library when you're there. Now, is there a limit to the number of kids you can have? There, as, as an individual to bring? No, no, no. Is, is there a limit to the number of kids that can be part of that program? Unfortunately, yes, because of the space limitations of, of the room that okay, it's in. The reason I ask that is <laughs> if you don't register ahead of time and you just show up. You, you may miss out. Right. Then Absolutely. You may be turned away because there just isn't room in the... Absolutely. Okay. All right. So they go to the uh, Daniel Boone Regional Library website. Yes, sir. And All they right. can register there. Jennifer Bean, thank you so much for coming it's by. It's my pleasure. How's that coconut milk? <laughs> <laughs> That's still nutritional, right? It's still water. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Jennifer Bean. Good to have you here from the Central Missouri Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. Tomorrow, via VAC and State Historical Society. We'll see you then. Thank you so much for listening. Bye-bye.